we're back on this adventure of the Bible. And I want to ask you a question. Did you know that there are two atoms in the Bible? Two different atoms. A, D, A, M. There's two of them. A lot of people don't know that. But look at 1 Corinthians 15.45. 1 Corinthians 15.45 says this. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So you got the first Adam, and then you got the last Adam. Now everybody listening to this lesson is in either one of those atoms. You're either in the first man atom or you're in the last atom. And the first man atom was made a living soul. The last atom was made a quickening spirit. Now look at Romans 5, 12 through 19, and I'll show you once again the two atoms. It says in Romans 5, 12, Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and a gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men under justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So you can see it's comparing the two, the first Adam to the last Adam. Now we're going to look at both atoms, comparing and contrasting them. And by the end of this, I want you to figure out, are you in the first man, Adam, or are you in the last Adam? So, the first Adam. Did you know that the first Adam is called a son of God? The same Adam that had a wife named Eve and ate off the tree back there in Genesis 3, did you know that he is called the Son of God? In Luke 3.38, it says, which was the son of Venus, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the Son of God. So the first man, Adam, was a son of God. Why is he a son of God? Well, Adam didn't have an earthly father. I mean you. He was a direct creation from God, and the Bible calls him the Son of God. God was his father in that sense. But the last Adam is also the Son of God. Look in Luke one thirty five. In Luke one thirty five, it's going to show you that the last Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the Son of God. It says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So you see, the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Well, you say, Well, I thought that he was, he was God. He is. You know, a lot of people uh, have told me over the years, that Jesus Christ is not God, he's just God's son. But by calling him God's son, you actually are making him equal with God, just like the Pharisees. Look at this verse. 
in John 5, 18. It says, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ, he didn't ever, uh, he didn't just begin. He didn't have a beginning. He didn't just begin in a manger one day. He's always been and he's all, always been here. He says himself in Revelation chapter 1, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. He calls himself the Almighty. He's a son of God because Luke one thirty five, it says, The power of the high shall overshadow thee, therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The Holy Ghost came on Mary, and she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. God used Mary to come down to this earth and manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 For God was manifested in the flesh. So you got the first Adam. The first man Adam, he's the son of God. You got the last Adam. He's a son of God. They're a son of God in different ways. And then what about you? Are you a son of God or are you a son of the devil? You know, the devil has sons. Acts 13.10. In Acts 13.10, it says this. He said, "In O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? You see, you're either a son of God or you're a son of the devil. The moment I got saved, you see, I knew I was a sinner. I knew I was going to hell. But I knew that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins and that he was buried and resurrected. I put my faith on the Lord Jesus Christ to save me. At that moment, I became no longer a child of the devil. I became a son of God. You are either in the first Adam and a child of the devil, or you're in the last Adam and you're a son of God. So which one are you? Are you in the first Adam or are you in the last Adam? Now, something else about the first Adam. He has a wife, Genesis 2, 22 through 24. It shows you where the Lord is making Adam a wife. In Genesis 2, 22, it says, And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. You see, the first Adam, he has a wife. And his wife pictures the bride of Christ. Look how she came about. The Lord pierced the side of Adam as a deep sleep came upon him and made his bride out of his rib. Now you think about the Lord Jesus Christ. The last Adam, he also has a bride. And you know how he got his bride? He got his bride by dying on a cross. A very deep sleep came on him. And he was also pierced in his side. Just like Adam was pierced in the side. The Lord Jesus Christ was pierced in the side. And one of those soldiers took his spear and pierced him. And you know the verse, blood and water came out. And when he was on the cross... He was dying for his bride, just like Adam died for his bride. And it even, just like it caused, Adam said, this is not bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Check out Ephesians 5, 30 through 32. In Ephesians 5, 30 through 32, it says, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. You see how he used the husband and wife relationship to illustrate to you our relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are the bride of Christ. The moment you believe, you become part of the, bo uh, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, 
2 Corinthians 11, 2, Paul says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So the first man, Adam, he has a bride. The last Adam, he's got a bride. The first Adam, he's one flesh with his bride. The last Adam, he's one flesh with his bride. So are you in the bride? Or are you still in the flesh? You see, uh, the, the moment I got saved, the Lord cut my body away from my soul. My soul and flesh are no longer connected. He separated them. Uh, I, he divorced them. They're no longer together. And in Romans 7, the Lord illustrates this once again using the, the husband and one wife relationship. In Romans 7, 1, it says, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband. So she, this woman presently has an husband, is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So if her husband dies, she's loosed from that law, and she can she's free to remarry. It says in Romans 7, 3, So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. See, if her husband was still alive and she married somebody else, she's called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Now look at this. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So you see, the moment you got saved, you became dead to the law. Your flesh died when you got saved. It's So when you live for the flesh, you're just serving a dead corpse. But your flesh died when you got saved. Your spirit was quickened, made alive. And since your flesh died that you were married to, you're free to marry the Lord Jesus Christ. God cut your soul loose from your flesh. A divorce took place. You're no longer married to your flesh. It still bothers you all the time because just like an ex-girlfriend or boyfriend, they're always bugging you sometimes, calling you, trying to get back with you. You see, the flesh wants to rise up and take control and, and be the, the main thing, and he's jealous of your new life. So you just got to shoot him back down and say, I've moved on. I've, I'm with the Lord Jesus Christ now. And you got to beat the flesh down, you see. But you see, the Lord cut your soul loose from your flesh. A divorce took place, made you free to marry the Lord Jesus Christ. Has that happened to you? Well, if you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and you got born again, that has happened to you, even if you didn't know it. That took place the moment you got saved, the moment you believed the gospel. So, the first Adam, he's got a wife. He's one flesh with his wife. The last Adam, he's got a wife. He's one flesh with his wife. The first Adam was in the image of God, Genesis 127. In Genesis 127, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. But listen to this. He lost the image. He had the image before he fell, but then he fell. And he lost the image. And in Genesis 5, if you look at Genesis 5 and verse 3, it says, And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. So you see, the children of Adam are in the image of Adam in his own likeness and in, in his image. They're not born in the image of God. They're not, they weren't in the image of God like Adam once was. And you'll notice... In Genesis 5, it says, This is the book of the generations of Adam. Now, the last Adam also has a genealogy in Matthew chapter 1 and like Luke chapter 3. And you'll see that in Matthew chapter 1, when it's got the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
It doesn't mention people dying. But here, in this genealogy of the first man, Adam, it mentions death over and over and over. And remember, five is the number of death in the scriptures. Many times when somebody got killed, they got smote under the fifth rib. Death has, <clears throat> death has five letters in it. Satan has five letters in it. When a, a pilot's about to crash, he says, May Day, the fifth month, May. You see, five's the number of death. And Adam, it mentions death the first time in Genesis 5. Now, Abel got killed in an earlier chapter, but Genesis 5, the first time you see death. It says, In the days of Adam and after he had begotten Seth were 800 years, and he begat sons of daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. It don't matter how long you live, you're going to die. And Hebrews 9.27 says, But as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. You're all going to die, you're all going to be judged. And over and over again, you see in Genesis chapter 5, this person lived so long a time, maybe 900 and something years, but he died. Over and over again, it says, and he died. So that's because everybody that's born of Adam, you know, you came from Adam. And everybody from Adam dies because of the curse. He had sin in his blood. When he, the moment he hit off the tree, he lost the image. And everybody from then on out, you're, you're born with a problem. And you got to get that problem fixed. You, you have to get saved to get that problem fixed. You see, you have to get born again. And in 1 Peter one twenty three, you see, when you were born it wasn't a good birth. It was a it was a bad birth. First Peter one twenty three see it says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. When you get born again, you're born of an incorruptible seed, the word of God. Now your first birth was corruptible. It's from the first Adam. And until you get born again, you're in the first Adam. You want to get born again and get into the last Adam. You see, when Jesus Christ was born, he didn't have an earthly father. God was his father. He, his first birth was good. He didn't have to get born again. His, his, his birth wasn't bad. You see, he, wasn't, he didn't have the sin nature of Adam. See, that's the virgin birth. That's why that's so important. If he, if Joseph was his father, then he's just a sinner like us. But God is his father. You see, I was a child of the devil. But the moment I got saved, I got born again. And that's how I got the image of God back. So have you been born again? Are you? Do you have the image of God back? In Hebrews 1 and verse 3, it says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. You see that? It called him the express. The Lord Jesus Christ is the express image of his person. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, Adam, the first Adam, lost the image. The last Adam is the express image of his person. All right, the first Adam, in Adam all die. In that first Adam all die. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 22. In 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 22, it says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. See the difference? In Adam, all die. But in Christ, all are made alive. You see, the first Adam, he was a living soul. He was given life. The last Adam is a quickening spirit. Quickening means he makes you alive. If he quickened you, he made you alive. The last Adam's a quickening spirit. 
So for as an atom, I'll die. You stay in that first atom, you're going to die. But you get in that second atom, the Lord Jesus Christ, you're made alive. Your flesh shall die, but that inner man will never die. So you stay in the first atom, you're not only going to die physically, but you're one day you'll face a second death, the lake of fire. You get in the, first, the last atom, you may die physically because the flesh doesn't get born again, but you'll never die spiritually. So, in Christ you're made alive. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. And let's look at uh, Romans 5 again. Romans 5, 12. Romans 5, 5, 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. That was Adam. He had off the tree, sin entered, in, entered into the world, and death by sin. You know, the Lord told him, In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And he died that day, spiritually speaking. And then he died later on, physically. And it says, And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Romans 5.13, For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. All those people died from Adam to Moses. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Who is the figure of him that was to come? But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, you see, through, the, through Adam's offense, many people have died. Everybody. Much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. You see, the first Adam brings condemnation. The last Adam brings justification. And if you're saved, you've been justified. God declared you righteous even though that you were not. It says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men and the justification of life. By the first Adam came condemnation. By the last Adam, justification. It says, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. You see, you came into this, you came out of your mother's womb speaking lies because of the first Adam's disobedience. Many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteousness. Many be made righteous. When Jesus Christ showed up, he did everything perfectly, never sinned one time. And when you get born again, he gives you the righteous life that he had. He puts that on your record. So you're made righteous when you get saved. It says, Moreover, the law entered, but that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord, the last Adam. So you can see the first man, Adam, he's a living soul. He was given life. The second man, the last Adam, he's a quickening spirit. He gives life. He quickens you. Have you been quickened? Ephesians 2.1. When you got born again, he quickened you. It says in Ephesians 2.1, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You were dead when you were in Adam. But then you got saved. You got quickened. And the last Adam gives life. He quickened you. And the only way you're going to get quickened is to get born again. Your first birth is bad. You can't stay in Adam. you got to leave the Adam's family and get in the last Adam's family. Before salvation, you aren't a son of God. You're a child of the devil. you got to get born again. And then you're born into the family of God. You're a son of God. In John 1.12... 
it says, but as many as received him, you got to receive him. You got to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Have you done that? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, he says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, that which I also received, he says. Yet you receive it. And he gives the gospel how that Christ died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You believe on Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross and then you get born again. It's not just it's not just believing facts. You take it a step further and put your trust in those facts to save you. You know, there's a lot of people that know what Jesus did. Maybe they believe that he did it, but they've never... They wouldn't claim to be saved or, or anything like that. They're not denying he did those things. They're not denying that it couldn't save them. But they've never came to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner they are and accepted him, receiving him as their Savior. You have to receive him. You believe on him. So, the first man, Adam, is a natural man. Look at 1 Corinthians 15.46. 1 Corinthians 15, 46 says, Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, After, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, so are they also that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So, the first man, Adam, he's just a natural man. The last Adam, a spiritual man. Romans 7.22 Romans 7.22 says, This is Paul talking, and he says, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But then he says, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. You see, he says, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. And then in Romans 7, 24, he says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You see, your flesh, your body, it didn't get born again. It's still of Adam. It's going to go to the dust. But that inward man delights in the law of God. That's the spiritual man. Your flesh is still the natural man. So stuff you do in the flesh, it's no good. You read the Bible in the flesh, you're not going to get it. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. They're spiritually discerned. you got to read and have the Spirit speak to you, the inner man, to get it. So when you got saved... You've got two natures. You've got two natures going on. You've got the old man, which is still of Adam, but you got the new man, which is of the last Adam. So that's why there's a war going on, the war between your flesh and your spirit. Your flesh is connected to the first Adam. Your spirit has now been quickened. It's connected to the last Adam. The first man, Adam, is a natural man. The last Adam is a spiritual man. The first man, Adam, is earthly, the last Adam is heavenly. And Ephesians 2, 6 says that he's raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The first man, Adam, he just take, takes you back to the dust. Just like he told Adam, from dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return. You get in Jesus Christ, he raises you up together and makes you sit in heavenly places in him. The first man, Adam, his origin's from heaven. The last Adam or, excuse me, the first Adam, his origin is of the earth. He came out of the dust of the ground. The last Adam, his origin is heaven. He left heaven. He, he, he left the riches of heaven and became poor for us. Look at 1 Corinthians 2.14. 1 Corinthians 2.14 
says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You've got a natural man, your flesh. you got the spiritual man. you got two natures. Do you have two natures? If you've been born again, you do. You've got two natures. And that's why you're struggling. But one day, you're going to leave this body that's still connected to Adam. You're going to get a new body that's like the inward man. So, the first man, Adam, he brings condemnation. The last Adam, he brings justification. Let's look at some more verses about that. John 3, 16 through 18. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. You see, at the first man, Adam, condemned the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. See, if you've not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ who brings justification, you're still in Adam, and in Adam, he brings condemnation. So you're condemned already. The moment you realize you're a sinner, you've sinned against God, you're condemned. But the the last Adam brings justification. Romans 5, 16 says, And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Are you condemned or are you justified? You need to ask yourself that question. Now the first man, Adam, his sin covered every man. Romans 5, 12. His sin covered every man. The last Adam died for the sins of every man. That's 1 John 2, 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The first man, Adam, his sins covered every man. The last Adam died for the sins of every man. Now the first Adam yielded to temptation in a garden. Genesis 3, 6. He yielded to temptation in the garden. The last Adam always beat the temptation. Just like in Matthew 4. Just like in Mark 14, 32 through 36. Just over and over again. When he was tempted, he always beat the temptation. 1 John 2, 16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. All those temptations the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life the lord jesus christ was tempted with that he was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin the first adam you can't say that about him he yielded to temptation the first adam he broke a covenant by eating when he ate of that tree he broke the adamic covenant or he broke the Edenic Covenant. The Edenic Covenant was don't eat off the tree. You can do anything you want, just don't eat off the tree. The last Adam, he established a new covenant when eating. So the first Adam broke a covenant by eating. The last Adam brought in a new covenant when eating. Matthew 26, 26. And as they were eating... Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. So, the first Adam broke a covenant by eating. The last Adam established a new covenant when eating. The first Adam tasted of the fruit and brought death. The last Adam tasted death for every man and brought life. Look at Hebrews 2.9. In Hebrews 2, 9, it says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. That first Adam tasted off the tree, brought death. The last Adam tastes death for every man and brings life. 
The first Adam ate from a tree that would make man be as gods, knowing good and evil. Remember that? That's what the devil told Eve. He said, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So when they ate off that tree, they knew good and evil. But then the last Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus is God who became a man. You see, the first Adam, he ate, off a, he ate from a tree that would make man be as gods. The last Adam is God who became a man. 1 Timothy 3.16. 1 Timothy 3.16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. God became a man. He was fully God and fully man. And he did that to bring you life. To save sinful flesh and blood man, he had to come down to earth as a flesh and blood man and shed his blood. So Adam made off a tree that would make him be as gods. Jesus is God who became a man. And when you get saved, when you get born again, when you become a son of God, you got the promise that one day your body is going to be like his. And 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You see, you stay in your sin, you try to think you're better than God, you try to think that you, you make yourself your own God, that's not going to work. You get saved, and then he'll make you be like him. And you're, even in your whole Christian walk on this earth, you're trying to make yourself more and more like Jesus Christ. Now, the first man, Adam, was naked and received clothes. In Genesis 3.21, remember, the Lord made coats of skins and clothed him. Well, the last Adam was clothed, but he was stripped naked. Matthew 27.28, and once again, this was for your sins. It says in Matthew 27, 28, And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. So, the first man, Adam, was naked and, and didn't even realize it. Then he sinned and was naked. And he tried to cover himself with fig leaves. The Lord said, you know, that's not going to work. And he made him coats of skins and clothed him. The last Adam was clothed, but stripped naked. A picture of how he became sin for us, you see. And then when you become a son of God, you get saved. He clothes you. You're going to be clothed. It says in 2 Corinthians 5, verses 2 through 4. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. You see that? We're looking for our new body. We're looking to be clothed upon. And God's going to give you some clothes. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean, the Bible says. Now the first man, Adam, tasted death from a tree that he wasn't supposed to eat off of. The last Adam tasted death on a tree. In 1 Peter 2.24, 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. He tasted death on a tree, the first Adam tasted death from a tree. And when you get saved, you're eating off the right tree. You know what the Bible calls the Lord Jesus Christ over and over again? It calls him 
the branch. When you got saved, you're taking a bite from the right tree. You're taking a bite from the tree of life, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is your tree of life. You see, if Adam would have beat the temptation, the Lord most likely would have granted him access to that tree of life and he would have took of that tree and he would have lived forever. Me and you, we got the opportunity. If you're not saved, you can eat from the right tree right now and you can live forever. And God has it fixed to where no matter what, if you eat off of the right tree, the Lord Jesus Christ, nothing can take away your salvation. And that's why he placed uh, cherubims in the Garden of Eden to, to guard the way of the tree of life. Because if, uh, if Adam would have got in there and ate from the tree in his sinful state, God had it fixed to where he, he himself wouldn't even take away the eternal life. And Adam would have just lived forever in his sinful state if he would have ate off the tree of life after eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But see, when we get saved, you're eating off the tree of life, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he fixes you on the inside and cuts your soul loose from your flesh to where you're no longer a sinner. On the inside, you got the righteousness of Jesus Christ, and you're living forever, just as sinless as Jesus Christ. Now, you still sin in the flesh because it's of Adam, but your new man on the inside, that's a different story. It doesn't sin. It's the outward man that sins. That's why Paul said, it's, it's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So the first man tasted death from a tree. The last Adam tasted death on a tree. The first Adam sweated because of the curse. Genesis 3.19. Yeah, look at Genesis 3.19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art. And unto dust shalt thou return. See, he sweated because of the curse. The last Adam sweated as it were great drops of blood. And became the curse. Luke twenty two forty four. And he has made a curse for us. Galatians 3.13. You see, he was made a curse for us. Galatians 3.13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. The first man, Adam, worked in thorns because of the curse. You know, the Lord said thorns and thistles the ground was going to bring to him. And he's going to have to work in that. The thorns and thistles. The first Adam worked in thorns because of the curse. The last Adam wore a crown of thorns, thorns and became the curse. The last Adam wore a crown of thorns and became the curse. The first Adam worked in thorns because of the curse. So Jesus put on that crown of thorns because he was made a curse for us. They put that crown of thorns on his head, showing you that he was dying for the sins of the whole world. John 19, 5, Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. So you see, the first man, Adam, brought sin, brought condemnation. The last Adam brings righteousness, brings justification, brings eternal life. Which Adam are you in? Are you in the first Adam because you haven't ever been saved and therefore you're condemned already and you're dead spiritually and one day you're going to die physically and then one day you're going to face the second death, the lake of fire because you won't get out of the first Adam, you won't leave the Adam's family. Are you saved? Are you, have you believed on Jesus Christ? Are you in the last Adam? The last Adam brings life. The last Adam is a quickening spirit. The last Adam will make you a son of God. The last Adam will put you in the bride of Christ. You get saved and you'll be one flesh with the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll get the image of God back if you believe on Jesus Christ. If you believe on Jesus Christ, you'll be made alive because he's a quickening spirit. If, you're, if you'll get in Jesus Christ, he'll make you 
the spiritual man on the inside. If you get in Jesus Christ, he'll raise you up together and make you sit in heavenly places. If you get in the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for the sins of every man, he'll give you a way to, to escape the temptation. He always beat the temptation. If you get in the Lord Jesus Christ, you get in on the new covenant. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're taken from the right tree, the branch, the tree of life, the Lord Jesus Christ. If, you're, if you believe on Jesus Christ, the curse is taken away because he became the curse for you. So all you got to do, you know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. So you know that you're a sinner because that's why he had to die. He was buried, showing that he was really dead. But then he resurrected, showing you that he's really God. If he wasn't really God, if he was if if he was of Adam and Joseph was his father, he would have stayed dead. But he's the son of God. God was his father. God's his father. And he got up out of the grave. And all you got to do to be saved is come to him as a guilty sinner and say, I want to believe on you, Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to wash me with your blood, and I want to be saved forever like the night i got saved i knew as a sinner i knew i was going to hell didn't know nothing else but i knew jesus christ died on the cross for me that he was buried and resurrected that he shed his blood and i said i know these things i want to be saved please save me for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved have you called on the name of the lord and he'll save you just like that and then you can get out of the adams family and get in the last adams family the Lord Jesus Christ.